Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because she's supposed to be working. But anyways, okay, so welcome, welcome. So Travis, I want to tell you a little bit about Travis and Rebecca, and then I've got like tons of questions for you, and then tons of questions about Rebecca, and I'm sure you Dave has some questions because, you know, being, that's, that's like his dream. It's like he just wants to, he loves his customers, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, you know, the the service industry is a lot different than the build industry. It so is. you're like living his dream life right now. Mm -hmm. That's like, <laughs> he's like, someday I just want to get a garage in the house and just build bikes, right? Right. <laughs> so, Pretty much fuck everybody on building bikes. Yeah, building bikes and maybe I'll take some customers in between. So, so Travis owns um, Art Cycles, which um, you build custom motorcycles. Um, you're also an engineer? I am. Wow. So does that help with the building of it the does. bikes? Like it does, yeah. Putting it all together? So, um, so I usually look at a project. I try to incorporate as much nerdy stuff in there as I can as I'm going through the build. I love that. Yeah, so uh, sometimes it's really subtle, and sometimes I make it stand out a little bit more. OK, so give an example of like a time that something was really nerdy, because I'm a nerd. So I love that shit. Oh, uh, that's really stood out. Like that you just couldn't hide your nerdiness. Well, some of the stuff is like mechanical connections and things for the cables or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Rather than just having it going straight through a lever, you know, trying to figure out a way to make, make incorporate some pulleys or something of that nature, <laughs> make it look a little more. Yeah, yeah, you have different linkages, stuff like that. Real kind of subtle stuff, but uh, it takes it takes a lot of. Uh, thought and forethought before you build a bike like that because everything's just so centric to this is what you get off the shelf. Yeah. I mean the frames are set up that way in production because they're trying to hammer them out through the assembly line. The aftermarket's very off the shelf bolt on. Yeah. So if you want to do something different, you have to have a little bit of a forethought of that before you go into your bike build. Mm -hmm. Almost kind of like you have to build it really from scratch, right? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes uh, Sometimes I'll buy a bike that's maybe an auction bike that's kind of clapped out. Yep. And I'll completely redo it. Like I, I redid a O2 Rope Kick and I did it in tuxedo white and black and uh, had 88 cubic inch motor stock. So we put a cam plate in it and some big cams and did some work on the fuel injection and put aftermarket tuner on it. So that's kind of the nerdy stuff I like. So aftermarket tuner stuff. Yeah. Now the older big bikes cams. I build, the All guys love big cams. Yeah, big cams. <laughs> but uh, the 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 carbureted bikes are a little bit different because I can incorporate like a Makuni style carburetor. I rebuilt. I found a barn to find the Royal Enfield over in Tampa, and uh, we upgraded it to a Makuni carburetor and electronic ignition and that kind of stuff. So it's rideable. But it still maintained the soul of what it was. That's cool. So I don't like to take away from what the back was. Like I'm currently building a BSA, a 65 BSA Thunderbolt. And I've got it stripped down now to the frame. And some of the things I'm going to do to it, I'm using the factory tank, but I'm Frisco mounting it. And um, I'm using a Springer front end that looks similar to what would have came on the back and it's more modern. And I'm using this brakes, but I'm using the, the original. BSA hub covers right. kind of obscure that item. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So it's so, a look like yeah, it's. My first bike was 67 plant. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting story about Trump. So when me and my wife first got married, I had a 66 model chopper with a plunger tail frame, and we didn't have a garage. So I found a big uh, cardboard box from a refrigerator, right. laid it over the carpet, and I put my Triumph in the extra bedroom. Oh my God, it's going to be a Triumph guy thing. Because you have his it yeah. coach instead of a When a time, well, I worked in Massachusetts, so when a time like, we had a slider, I just pulled the bike in, knocked it in the living room, and that became a Christmas tree. And hey. Occasionally we'd watch Easy Rider on, sitting on the bike in the fucking living room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew some guys that used to do burnouts in their floor of their house on yeah. their bikes. It's but, crazy. Well, the apartment wall, the apartment wall, uh, appreciate that much. No, no, no. But uh, one of my goals is, and I keep telling my wife, I want to find just the perfect bike. And I'll tell you, if you ever go to Ween's Motorco YouTube channel 
Okay. He has this bike called the Rainmaker. And it's it's a it's a fifties trunk, an original paint. Okay. And the and the pedestrian slicer on the front fender says run the rainmaker. Ooh. If I he's rifling that bike off right now. If I win that bike, it's going in my damn dining room. It is. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Kids and all. I'm gonna have right? spotlights on the thing, like an Oriental rug, it's gonna be sitting in my dining room. The Rainmaker, I like it. We'll have to check that out. We didn't even, I didn't even ask for any pictures of your belts. So I'll have to have you send them to me after and I'll put them when I, when I mix the... Well, you can find me on Instagram. Awesome. So, so can you tell people where it's so... Yeah, it's R underscore cycles underscore Melbourne. Okay, R underscore cycles underscore Melbourne. There's yeah. several of my builds on there. And, uh, recently, we just had the chopper show at uh, Space Coast Harley Davidson. Oh yeah, yeah. That Which was, one was yours? It was the blue um, white. Evo up by the front. They had the they had the silver flake trim. Okay, and the okay. Strap. Okay, okay. Maybe we can find it and share a picture um, in the comments. That would be kind of fun. Yeah. So it, it's really unique. Yeah, I should put that on uh, your Facebook. Yeah. It, one of the things that it has on that bike is the Carl Speed Shop Typhoon Carburetor. Carl died. He was in Daytona. He originated that carburetor for racing. And he passed away, unfortunately. But I went to my Oktoberfest. I was having some problems with that carburetor. They don't make it anymore. Very limited knowledge. At the swap meet in Daytona, at the, at the flea market there, I ran into his son. Oh my god, that's so cool. Yeah, and his son is going to be sending me a rebuild kit just for a spare. But he told me how to tune it to my engine. So he taught his son? Yeah, he taught it, passed it down to his son, and his son told me how to tune that carburetor correctly. That's cool. Yeah. So very cool. it's only got like one jet. It's, it's very complicated. It's, um, it's quite simple. It's a simple carburetor, but it's hard to tune your bike. Right, right. So. It, it loads up a lot yeah, on the lot of range. Particular. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very particular. Where in a normal, like a Makuni or something, you can turn it two or three times and hear a change. You turn this thing a quarter turn and it starts either loading up or getting lean. Right, right. So it's very finicky. But uh, I got it, I got it right. So that bike has a 107 SNS, 580 cams, and it's got a three inch top fuel good BDL uh, belt drive. It's got a 200 rear tire and it's got the TC Bros six over sprinkler. Oh my god, that's going to be badass. It's pretty fast. Yeah. That's something that takes off and you still don't want to. We were talk, we're talking about that. Get it too powerful and you twist the throttle, the bike's gone and you're still standing there with your legs open. <laughs> yeah. It's gone. In a former life, it was an amateur drag bike. Oh, no shit. Yeah, so I had to make it more streetable. It's almost unrivaled. You know, in that configuration. What inspired you? Like, what got you to get into building bikes? Like, so, when I was a child, probably eight years old, my dad drove home the '60s. I don't remember the exact year of the make, but it was a Harley Davidson Sportster. It was a chopper, and it had a black tank with red flames. And he took that bike into the house. Many parts were rebuilt on our dining room table. <laughs> And I was just fascinated by it. when he finally fired that thing up. I was just so fascinated by the way it sounded and ran. You know, it's, I guess it's just in our DNA. Mm -hmm. If you're a motorhead, kind of born into it, and it's kind of in your in your in your DNA. But uh, yeah, so uh, we had little mini bikes and things of that nature. And then when I was 13 years old. My dad had passed away when I was 11, so when I was 13, my stepdad shows up with a 50 Honda Spree in the trunk of his Mercury Marquis <laughs> for my 13th birthday. Oh, it was yours. It was your birthday present? Yeah, no, I'm running. Very cool. Again, it was a barn fund. So he said, here's your bike. You get it running, wear it out. So I spent days and days and days trying to figure out how to get that damn bike running. And it, takes a while. Yeah. And you know, very knowledge. Yeah. So finally the first time that thing lit up, 
I was so ecstatic. And we lived in this community. I just took off on the thing <laughs> and rode the shit out of it. I ran out of gas. I had to push it home. But uh, yeah, so after that, we went to uh, had a CD 100 Honda that was another barn find. So how barn find seemed to be my niche. I always dream like, right? <coughs> and you can't find barn find. Like, I mean, they, you can't see they them. Like, they, uh, they come to you. Like, it's almost uh, like. It's almost like a motorcycle whisperer thing, you know what I mean? You notice you just stumble yes. over them rather than if you're looking for them, you can't find them anywhere. Well, it's, you talk to the right people, and yeah, you know, it's a, a lot of it's networking. If you talk to people, you know, when I stopped, I was this, my '67 Triumph, and I was in the first place back then. I come across a couple more Hortons and BSAs and shit like that. And I say, you know, I had black bikes in my fucking barn. Yeah. There's pick the woman, pick this, pick that. Yeah. Then want to sell them all. My ex wife to uh, buy a house for my ex wife. And all of a sudden, I got an ex wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the um, barn funds seem to be a scour Craigslist. <coughs> well, really? Yeah. But a lot of them are getting. Uh, Scraped up, they think it seems yeah. to be a lot of people are on the hunt for buying cars. Since COVID, the demand for motorcycles has increased. Can you find it harder to find the yeah, it's harder. Finds? Well, the projects that I used to get, we'll say I bought a, a project Sportster. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to you can get them eight, nine hundred dollars, thousand dollars. Now the same box three thousand dollars. Yep. Yep. So, yep. it's like five bucks, five hundred bucks. I buy a Norton or buy a fucking five hundred bucks, and pretty much everything was there. It just had to be unseized or gone through and cleaned up, mm -hmm. make it live again. And, uh, and I prefer to find motorcycles with a soul. I don't, nothing against the Japanese bikes, but I tend to shy away from them because. I don't feel like they have the same soul as a British or American guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's, that's well put. It's well put. I think, and I, I think the reason was I was talking to somebody the other day about this. A friend of mine from England. Um, I think the people that build American bikes and British bikes are passionate about that product. Mm -hmm. And the riders themselves. Like you can go on, a, I'll say Royal Enfield for example. You go on there on YouTube and look up Royal Enfield Manufacturing. There's this one fellow that hand pinstripes all the things. Right, right. Wow. And he and he's just so happy that, that he's doing that. And he's so precise with his brush. That's the kind of stuff that makes a soul into a motorcycle. You know, it's it's built into it. Yeah. It's not some guy with a clipboard saying, "We got unit number." 899 done today and it's quality it's this and yes yeah. you know or somebody looking at a bike and ripping off that design and trying to copy it and make it what that is yeah yeah a good sure. example yeah. is the uh, the w800 kawasaki they copied the bsa um thunderbolt yeah. engine yeah. Well, they made a kawasaki but when you sit on that bike and if you sit on the bsa beside it the same thing you can just feel when you grab the handlebars or something different about that BSA than on that Kawasaki. It's a lot so it, It's just cold. It's like the Kawasaki's cold and emotionless, and it's just a piece of steel under your legs. You know, on the BSA, you, just, you can just feel it, not almost like it has a its own persona. And it's the energy around it. I love that. Yeah, I'm so like cool. a big energy person. And you, you like reject a lot of bikes, Dave, because of the, like, he'll, he'll be like, I ain't working on that. And of course, we're, we're working on his grant, uh, his, what is that, bedside manner. Because instead of saying that, that bike doesn't have a soul, <laughs> bedside manner. Yeah, he's like, I'm working on that piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one to hold it. That's another one to hold it. Lee said you can't post any pictures of the bikes, but. That's all right. We'll get him up there. We'll get him from you. She said, while we're live, she can't post it. Oh, so okay. It must not be letting her upload any pictures. But, um. Yeah, she's probably in the bathroom. So, watching it in the stall. I know. She's, no, she has a little closet <laughs> in the back. We, we you know, know my Instagram, but I also have a YouTube channel, Mark Cycles. 
Okay, and it's just our cycle straight up. Yeah, I have some shorts on there, some builds I made. But you can see some of the, you know, more professional photos of like the River King and stuff on my Instagram page. That's real cool. So, now, yeah, I'll, I'll get are on you that. Doing, do you do commission builds or you just do your builds the way you feel like doing them? And, uh, yeah, no, that's the way I do it. I, I get a bike first. I'll, some, I don't know what it is. I'll wake up some mornings and thinking, like that Royal Enfield, for instance. I just wanted to build a Royal Enfield because uh, they're getting more popular as we go. Uh, they're getting a following. Uh, I've always liked British bikes. I've never done a Royal Enfield. And the bullet, especially the 500 bullet, has a very unique sound. Right, right. They call it a thumper. Okay. And it does thump. And so, in, in just the way that it, I've seen them out running and I've seen a few videos on them, but I particularly wanted that one. So I scoured the internet probably for a month looking for one that needed to be restored, not one that somebody else had done that I was going to change. Oh, yeah. I looked for one that needed to be restored and I found that barn find. All the way up north of Tampa. So, me and my son, we loaded up in the van and went and picked it up. So, it's kind of a father son thing. Oh, so your son's? Yeah. Is your son building with you and helping you out? He's 14. He, um, he likes bikes. He wants to, he can't wait till he's 16 to start riding. But right now, his focus is video games. Oh, uh, yeah. It's hard to pry him away from this. Yeah. But any chance I get, like, he loves going to the swap meets and to the bike mm -hmm. shows. But uh, it's hard to drag him away from the video game sometimes. But so how, did, how do you have what do you have for resources for uh, that project here? For the, for the, for the resources to, oh yeah, yeah. So since they made that bullet from I think it was forty nine to two thousand one. Right. The exact same bike. Hmm. So what really? you yeah, so what you can do is well I had some variations, but Basically, the engine was the same, the transmission was the same. The ones that were made in India, good bikes, but not as well, not as good as the English ship. ship. And it, you could tell there was some inside of that. There's a, there's a marked difference, like the, the rockers, for instance. I can buy the Indian-made rockers for the valves, thirty dollars for a whole set. Right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Yep. Like the resources are a little bit easier. Oh, yeah, it's lots. But what you want to do is you want to find the new old stock British or you want to find used, slightly used, you know, British parts. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of links for you. Uh, it's Traffic kind of International Owners Club. Yeah. And also uh, Coventry Stairs. Uh, Coventry Stairs is. Uh, Wholesale, he, he actually distributes uh, uh, dealers, triumph dealers across the country. Okay. You know, old, old school stuff. When I he was a friend of mine on the he runs a business, he also rebuilds bikes from scratch. And uh, he has a lot of resources. I don't know if he still is, but he was president of the Triumph International. He gets new old stock directly from Britain. Oh, wow. I have to get that from the computer. <laughs> He's uh, giving up his information. Get all my past for him. Great deals. But I'll tell you, he has a lot of British aftermarket stuff. It's Lowbrow Customs. Yeah. Lowbrow has a lot of handlebars, fuel tanks, bolt on, hard tail section, weld on hard tail section. They have a lot of that stuff you can get off Lowbrow. I'm originally from East Tennessee in Knoxville, and there was a fellow back there. His name was Connor Schultz. Some people heard of him, some people have not, but uh, he was a famous triumph builder like in the 60s and 70s. He built bikes for Marty Robbins. And, as a matter of fact, I saw Marty Robbins' motorcycle that he built for Marty Robbins in his basement. He was an old fellow, real salty, and uh, he had a list on his door, the shit list. If you ever <laughs> in the wrong way, he brought your name on that 
list. He wouldn't say any more parts. But uh, yeah, he's passed away now. But uh, all those people like that growing up, they inspired me to build those bikes. You know, uh, I had a, lots of family friends. My mother went to school with a lot of people that ended up in clubs and things like one percenters and things, and they would come around on these cool club bikes and uh, old Harleys and I stuff. Just, I just love that shit. I just love and, that lifestyle, you know? Yeah. Well, we need to bring it back. It's it's very free. As a matter of fact, the tattoos on my knuckles are in German. Live free means live free in German. Mm. And uh, I think that our society, number one, our society's trying to steer us in a direction that's we're not unique. Cookie cutter, yeah. yeah. Cookie cutter. It's exactly. like uh, you know, they, our advertising, our everything says if you don't drive this car, live in this neighborhood, kids dressed a certain way, then you're a failure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of the way they steer us, and it takes away the uniqueness of our society. I think that's why people like us that build and ride motorcycles have such an attraction, but in the culture has such a uh, attraction. Is because the uniqueness is gone. Yeah. You know, and it's something that people, awesome. and you got the guy who's working nine to five, dreaming of the day that he can retire and get his motorcycle. Mm -hmm. You know, and he kind of lives vicariously through us, the women. And, yep. And so, uh, that's quite a few customers that uh, first flight, and people are 60, 15, 65, 60, yep. 50, 60 since that first flight ago. Just learn how to ride it. Yeah. Well, big message is like, do it. Us. Like, don't wait. Because a few years later, they're on a trike. Yeah. You know, because you just waited so long. And I mean, I'm not saying a trike's bad. I'm just saying, like, you got like five good two wheel years of riding. Let's be honest. It's <laughs> the hover around in the motorcycle world. <laughs> it's the hover around in the motorcycle world. It is the hover around. Right. So why wait? Why, there, you know why? Why get on your first bike five years before you're ready for hover round, right? I mean, mm -hmm. do it, right? Get on a bike, do it. We, I love seeing um, the young kids getting on bikes. Yeah, me too. Like that's a we have we have a small group and and you know they check in every now and then, but they, it's great to see the younger generation getting on bikes because they're. They're kind of grabbed it by the horns rather than, you know, mm -hmm. waiting. Well, that's, that's what I was saying about the Royal Enfield. Start, Royal Enfield has built a bullet. Now they've moved their headquarters back to England. Mm -hmm. And BSA is coming back out with the Thunderbolt. Or, I'm sorry, the, the, yeah, it's the Thunderbird, not the bullet. That's the BSA. And they're coming back out with another one. Royal Enfield made the Continental GT. And these millennials and younger generation are flocking to those bikes. Right. Oh, I just got chills. That's awesome. Yeah. And we should plant with that big wheel. And they have a lot of vintage bikes, but they also got their uh, cafe style. Yes, yeah, uh, some of the newer ones, like the live wire and stuff. But for us, like well, we're, we're the old are. school generation. And so this is what the younger, like, just like clothing, you know, they have different visual, I guess, or different yeah. look. But that's, that's the one thing I love about motorcycles, too. It doesn't matter what age you are, what color you are, what nationality you are. When we all show up together, we're all in this one big group. Yep, yep. And that's yep. one thing that it, nothing separates us in that in, the, in that realm. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there's no problem. As long as you're not an asshole, you're in the group. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. Yeah. Assholes. Don't get any comments. If anybody has any questions um, that you'd like to ask Travis about a build, um, most of the covered kind of like how you got started, what inspires you, um, you know, what was your favorite build? Do you have a favorite one? Yeah, the Road King I just got finished with, I actually sold it to a friend of mine. Oh, so you have to look at it. And I have to look it. at him watching him riding <laughs> off into the sunset. But that bike, for some reason, so I went to an antique motorcycle club show at Green Gables okay. in Melbourne, right. and they were trying to save this old house, you know, um, historic landmark here in Florida, one of the first, like, large homes that was built in the area, 
the guy was like a cast iron mobile something. But, so this guy rolls up, looks like Santa. <clears throat> he has a panhead electric light. Wow. Which is ultra rare. Right. Well, nowadays it's ultra rare. Yes. You know? Yeah. And it was this black and white beauty. And I, I was just salivating on that motorcycle all day. I was parked next to him there. <laughs> We're exchanging back and forth about his bike. But I wonder, I know I, I can't afford, I have five kids and, you know, everything else. I can't afford to drop 60K on a fan head ultra right. electric light. So I, I started looking. The, the headlight nacelle is pretty much the same as a road king. Right. right. The you can get the road. You can get that panhead style shocks for the rear of the road king. It has the hard bags a little bit different than the bubble bags or whatever with a game light panhead. So I started looking. I thought I want to replicate that motorcycle, but a newer, more dependable bike, oh. and one which I can afford. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I started scouring again, and there's a guy down in Port St. Lucie, Bud's Chrome Nuts. Yep. yep. And that guy has such good deals on his motorcycles. He really does. So I went down, he had a real king, and it was a jalopy. But it, somebody had owned it, stored it outside here in Florida. Every piece of chrome was ruined, but it was perfect price range, and it ran like a top. I rode it home. So uh, I, I chose that as a platform, the road game, because I could replicate so closely that dual glide, old electric glide look. Mm -hmm. So I said about replicating that thing. I bought the dual glide front fender M ones. I got the old. I, I did put a little bit more modern suspension on it because I wanted to be rideable. Um, I did the paint scheme, the black and white paint scheme, I bought the old panhead animals for the tank, and the tank shape's pretty much the same. I put beach bars on it like that thing had. <laughs> I put the Coke bottle grips, and when I got done with that bike, I I just felt so proud of that thing. And it took, it's my favorite one so far. Oh dear, when down your eye when you were well, <laughs> And I built it to sell, knowing it the whole time, but I, I, I was just so pleased the way it turned out, and I said, you know you're selling that bike. Oh. You built it to sell it. You didn't build it to keep it. I know. I said, look at it. You must want to keep them all, but. Yeah, they're like, yeah, they just want to keep them. And, uh, but I did buy it to sell them, or sort of to sell them. There's Rebecca watching. Yeah, Rebecca's watching. Hi, Rebecca. Sorry you couldn't make it. Um, I told Travis that you're going to have to come back on the show again, for sure. Yeah, we'll have have to be back on. Um, Speaking of which, since she's watching, That's right. You're we're going to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna cover a little bit. So, so you and Rebecca have been married for 25 years. 23. 23 years. Okay. okay. Well, so, see, so. close. <laughs> Feels like 25. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and you got five kids. Yeah. That's where the five came from. And so she, so she doesn't. Does she help ever help you with the bills? Yeah. So I get lift blindness. So. When, I, when I've had a bike on the list so long, and I'm such a perfectionist, like I start looking at things even when I'm done, mm -hmm. what I can change next time. Right, right. And she kind of reins me in from that. It's, it's what you do. You gotta get it too cluttered. But uh, I'll bring so her out. You on, tra on track, good. I'll bring her out in the garage and make her sit inside of the chair and, and stare at it. You know, like. You see these commercials about being nose blind? Yeah. Like they have a scent in their house, they, they don't notice it anymore. Yeah. So I get lift blind. I like that. People are going to steal that phrase now. That. Lift that blind. That. So I, I, this this last chopper I built, because I, I built that thing mostly out of used parts, like used tins. It was a, it was a, uh, the frame was a big dog mastiff. Mm -hmm. It's got a PC Bros spring yes. on it. As all these parts came together, there was just something about the bike that wasn't clicking with me. And she pointed out, well, you got these gussets in the front that are the same color as the frame, and it looks too tall. She says, you need to paint that black. And I did, and it completely changed the way the front of that bike looked. Oh my God, I love this girl. Mm -hmm. So she's kind of like your, 
she's going to help to bring it, reel it in. She's, she comes in with a fishing pole and yeah. reels it back Get in. Get that to cool. the <laughs> or, or like I said, uh, I was coming in there because there's something about this because I have tools all over the lift, parts all over the lift, you know, old parts stacked up around. I'm like, there's something about this. And she'll usually consult me. This is where you're looking at. Uh, <laughs> like the brains behind it. Every now and again, you're going to put that shit away so you can figure out when you arrow down your. Uh, yeah, and, and the thing is, you got to take them off the lift and bring them outside and look at them. Yes. Instead of out of the garage. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if they're on there for so long, like it's it's almost like um, gets a little jumbled, you know. Like, did I? Where does this one go? You know, do you ever have that? Uh, <laughs> like, I don't have that problem so much. I would, I would be like, <laughs> that would be me. I'd be like, okay, I know I took it off, or I know I'm going to put it on. But I guess that's the difference between a builder and a non-builder. Maybe, okay. but. Uh, I do recommend if you're, I built that bucket, it took me like three months. Mm -hmm. And it took me probably three months to build the road key. Mm -hmm. And about the same, yeah, I guess I guess you could say about three months for every bucket I built. So on That's average. Quite a while. And when you have all that lift that long, if they have tires on those, roll them off outside, look at them, evaluate the thing, see if you're happy with it, okay. but and then take it back in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's, you got to take it out of the work area. Yeah. And a pile of packs that are surrounding it. Yeah, the different lighting. And it helps to let the sun shine because you're not going to show it indoors most of the time. So yeah. if you want to show like or build something that you want to sell, for instance, it's going to catch some of the time. You got to have it where the sun hits it, what the shadows look like on it. Because you can get too much black, you can get too much chrome, you can get, you know, too much of everything. And you don't want your bike, if you're building a bike, you don't want your bike to look like everybody else's. Oh, that's right. You want to Yeah, I, yeah, yeah so, it's but like when I go to uh, Daytona Bike Week, it's a black road glide show. Right, right. Oh my God, it is. It's well, a black right. road glide show. This guy has a... <laughs> Something airbrushed on the nose. This guy has a sticker on the on the uh, saddlebags. Yeah, it's a black road glide show. And uh, <laughs> I, but so on those on those different ones catch you. Like I saw this one guy on Main Street. It was in the spring. He had a soft tail that he had put a split tank on, like a mm -hmm. like a teens and twenties hard right. tank shift. Uh, but I had a like a 96 or 88 cubic inch twin cam. He he did so much to replicate this 20s Harley on this soft tail frame. That's pretty cool. And he had the old uh, cable that ran up to a speedo on the tank. Right. The whole deal. He even used the 20 seat, the big wide solo seat. And the bike was so unique. They just had a crowd around it. Everybody had these seventy thousand dollar bikes. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know what the charge was so they wow. spend on some of these things, but airbrushed, chromed out, speakers just around in the trunk, you know, in the in the tour pack. But this bike, this guy probably I mean, Tommy got done, he may have had ten thousand dollars. I don't know what he spent, but you could tell he built it in his garage and used old used parts. And it got so much more attention because of the uniqueness of it. The soul. Yeah. Because of the soul of it. I wanted to do something like that with my slim um, because it just looks so much like an older bike. You know, it, it does. Like so old I, and I like the slim in particular. I like this slim. And that, when I sit on those bikes, it just feels like a comfortable pair of shoes. Yeah, and it feels like you're, you, you've like stepped back in time. It does. Like a, well, it's got the old uh, long rides. Slanders, kind of the flat, old original style handlebar. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think Captain America drove that slim, didn't he? Yeah. He drove a soft tail slim. Yeah. Yes, he must have. He's cool. Oh, cool. Captain America still on it. It's been up for Captain America, but I got it. Oh my God, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I didn't end up doing it though because I didn't love the slim. You know, like we, well, we know, take I, a lot of 
Well, we take a lot of long rides. Oh yeah. And I didn't. And I and I like I like my I like fatter tires. I like a fatter tire, the rear tire. It was. Just, I mean, and, uh, and I'm on a I'm on a road glide now, but it's not black. But um, it's a it just it feels different. It it, just, it was squirrely. I didn't like the way it, it handled in the rear. Yeah. Well, so we. I like fatter. I like. I just like a fatter profile. Yeah. You know what I mean. Well, the slim is. I think it goes an inch narrow. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. But the tire, they, they should be. If they kept the slim narrow, more narrow, because I'm short, you know, and maybe the tire's a little fatter. Of course, it wouldn't have the same one. Yeah, but so. I think they just put the wrong thread cap on it. That's what It wasn't comfortable on long rides. Well, the soft tail is a. It's a bar hopper. Yeah. It's a bar hopper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I like the soft tail. We had one in our heritage for a while. And we rode it from Port St. Lucie up to Malabar. And it was real windy that day. Oh, yeah. Rebecca made me pull off the interstate. Get me off the interstate. Because this is blowing you around. Yeah. It looked like you're drunk driving on it in the wind. Yeah. But uh, now, as far as. My favorite bike that Herman Davidson makes, the Road King number one, but second, Soft Tail Deluxe. And they stopped making yes, the Deluxe, but. That is a beautiful bike. If you watch Tales, from the King, Tales of a King on YouTube, he really hones in on the Road Kings, but also Cholos and Biclas. And that movement out in California, those Biclas and those Cholos, they have some beautiful bikes. And that's something young people are getting into too, the, the Cholos and stuff. That's really refreshing to see that because it's, yeah. I think it's keeping, as our manufacturers become more diluted to more cookie cutter, yeah, just, then all that unique stuff, I think people crave that. And that's something these manufacturers miss is that why is the aftermarket and restoration market a billion dollar market? It's because people want that. Yep. Right. Car companies need to make the same mistake, like the Chevy Blazer. I'm sure it's a good car. It's probably dependable, but it's not a K5 Chevy. No, no. You know, and, and like I, I often said, if if people go back to what made people, I mean, literally, the, the aftermarket business in America, it's a billion dollar industry, mm -hmm. the restoration and aftermarket. If those companies are go back and say. What is it that these people are spending their money on? Rather than just trying to look like a Kawasaki or something else. Right, right. Then it, let's make that. Then people won't have to go and buy these restaurants. They will buy this, and we can make it and sell it to them. Right. Well, mm -hmm. it's what uh, uh, Big Wheel Bag is uh, to so many different companies pumping out deeper bags, flat fenders, yeah. flat bags, you know. Extended everything, and only problem I see with it is it takes a lot to build that. Yeah, it's not very really right. It looks, I guess it looks cool. They look cool, but I think it looks cool. I the majority of them turn out to be around town if I could afford that. And, uh, I just, I can't see me going to fight it. But look at the money that people are spending on just the front wheel. All right, all right. Why did the Harley say, let's build that? Right, and that was the big draw for Harley earlier on was that you could read it like you could buy x different parts and change it up and i think that they've kind of gotten away from that and made it really difficult to i think trump, to trump did really good with the thruxton and they make a bobber now indian i have mixed emotions about indian <laughs> I have a dirty joke I'll tell you off camera about it. I'm not very. They're a good looking bike, but I'm not very fond of them. Pretty much a victory. Yeah. You look on a side by side, it's pretty much a victory. I did, I did okay. ride the Scout, and I like the Scout. A friend of mine bought one. And, uh, matter of fact, on the way back from where he bought it, some guy just took it for a much older bike, which was cool. Yeah, but somebody had repainted that. it. Somebody had repainted it in an old Indian color. It's not oh. something the Indian offered. Somebody had repainted that in an old Indian color, which made it look like a Indian color. Right, right. And that's that's the kind of stuff I think that manufacturers need to get back to. Is 
like if they, let's just say that Harley or Indian made a cholo, you couldn't keep them in the showroom. Mm -hmm. You know, right. this is stripped down, no radio, rideable bike that looks like an old bike. You couldn't keep them. It's my opinion. Yeah. Oh, well, they were just they were just making a lot of money. Like uh, that look kind of very similar to uh, just had the white sheet. The oh yeah, the revival. I love that dog. Was that was show? beautiful. The revival. Her, yeah, her, her oh, was really? the revival. They, was, they had their icon series, and they were supposed to come out with a bike. I think every year. Yeah, of an icon. Really. One of their first icon was the revival. That bike was beautiful. Beautiful bike. That was the old school setup. It was, uh, you know, it resembled the bike from the 50s and early 60s. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not trashing on anybody, I love it. I mean, I don't know what <laughs> But they're, yeah. they're getting out of hand with that. I just don't think, I don't want them to lose what they are. But, you know, it's yeah. going to become a, something that everybody ended up being nothing but everybody. Right. Well, they just oh, stopped yeah, sports and the Evo Sports are gone. Got some words of wisdom today. Are you blowing on that? I have to swear, it's been like 10 minutes. Swear. Of swears, we got about 10 more minutes. I do want to cover Rebecca a little bit because I think that what she's accomplished is really cool. Although, we definitely need to have you back and continue this conversation because, like, this is what I'm all about. And I'm, I, I'm going to bring you all back when we're done. Okay. And I gotta show you something. I gotta maybe, maybe something. Huh? No, <laughs> you'll be back. You'll be back. For those of you that know me, you know why I'm bringing him all, all back. For those of you that don't, um, well, we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so Rebecca, um, she owns Blackhawk M1 Security School. She does. Okay. So the name Blackhawk, like that sounds badass. So, I mean, I don't know what, security, what you do in a security school, but if I was going to Black Hawk, I think I'd be kicking out. She's a female entrepreneur, which is yes. awesome. And you said it's rare in the industry. It is. It's rare that a female would be involved in the security business because it's something that's a man's world. As a matter of fact, uh, mm. Fox News interviewed her several months ago about being a female security school owner. That's cool. Yeah, because uh, the women are starting to, you know, as we, as our society progresses, and we take away some of the stigmas of being a male or a female or whatever. People start to realize I can do that. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of pent-up aggression, man, that we're just like, <laughs> looking for an outlet for. <laughs> so, yeah, so her, her and her business, she can hang with any man I've ever met. But she's also a very Southern lady. So she's very uh, gracious and what you'd expect from a Southern lady, but... She'd your ass too. <laughs> I love it. I love what that. is this? Uh, what's what's this uh, school entail? Is it uh, like for private security, or so, is it for uh, self security? So what what it, what she does is she brings in anybody. As long as you can buy, legally buy a firearm, okay, you can go through her school and get certified through the state of Florida to be an armed security guard. Awesome. And so uh, they bring you in green as hell. And they'll take you, it's, so the first, to get your G, your D course, which is unarmed, mm -hmm. you, it's a five-day class, and it's roughly $250 somewhere in there. It's not bad, five days. Yeah, but she gives you a discount if you're military, first responder, former military, whatever. So she, we try to help Rebecca with that, I'm sure. Right. And so for that third, three days, you can come out with a career in security. Now, <laughs> so the G, which is your arm class, is three days, and you got you have dry fire time from your holster, and you have to go to the range and actually shoot about two hundred rounds. You have to be proficient then in your firing. Uh, she also offers mass shooter training. Because whatever reason people are getting off now killing lots of people. Uh, especially the churches and that sort of thing. Churches, schools. They, they, they're not on motorcycles. That's the problem. That's they the problem. need to be on a motorcycle. You wouldn't have the time. Well, all that like, oh, shoot a bunch of people, ride my motorcycle. Ride the motorcycle, man. Don't shoot anybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Right. Buy a damn motorcycle. What you spend on all that weaponry and ammo? Buy the fucking motorcycle. Yeah, you'd be happier. Like so it. and you're alive, and other people will be alive. Yeah. So she she takes these guys in. We have an instructor, Roland Demers, who's twenty some odd years in the in the police cool. world. And, uh, so they come out. So one of the things she really loves to do is to help like battered women. Love it. So if a woman's like battered and has no means to support herself or her kids, we can bring you into the school and when you leave, eight days worth of training, and if you don't even own a firearm, the total cost is around twelve hundred dollars. That's to buy your firearm, pay for the classes, pay for your ammo, and become certified as an armed security. But you make but you make the same amount of money coming out of our school as you would have an associate's degree. Mm-hmm. So you can spend two years of your life in 40K, get an associate's degree, yeah. or you can come to our school for eight days and yeah. come out making the same money. That's it's a nice. given. That's great. Right. Good Blackhawk M1. Yeah, and, and we have five companies that currently hire directly from her. Oh, no kidding. So if you come to her school, you have a job when you, you have a well. guaranteed job when you graduate. And that's something that really. We went to a veterans uh, thing down here in Vero a couple of weekends ago, and they have housing for veterans. Which I mean, these guys are remarkable what they do for our veterans. And I'm yeah, very grateful especially that they do in Vero, like I feel like they're. I'm great. very grateful that they do it. But I asked the guy, I said, "Okay, you give him a house. What then?" And he said, "What do you mean?" I said, "He has to pay his light bill, his mm-hmm. taxes, he has to buy groceries, he has to pay car insurance, he has to have a car." You have to give the person a career right. of some of some nature. So I was telling them, what better way? So yeah. something they already know, firearms or training, you know that kind of thing. And so we we try to we try to steer our veterans in that way because if you come out and you feel like you want to go back to school and have all this school loan burden, mm-hmm. come to our school and make the same amount. And so that's one that she's really trying to. Really trying to get the community, the veterans, and the battered women, and these and this fortunate, even people that have grown up and you know can't afford to go to college. Yeah. You know, come to the school and come that's, out with their career. That's awesome. And so, how long have you been doing this? Uh, well, a year. That's okay. great. That's great. So we have five kids too. So the lady's the same. That's probably a kid. Oh, it's, yeah, that's awesome. And uh, she also. <laughs> Takes care of her mother. <coughs> her mother, unfortunately, was diagnosed with dementia. Which is why she couldn't be here today. Yeah. So uh, her mother took a had an accident and fell on the, the other day. I hope she's okay. So uh, so she's a saint. I've been very blessed to have her in my life for sure, and she's a good cheerleader. That's she's a, she's my greatest critic, but also my greatest cheerleader. So. It's a good balance. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I can't wait to meet her. I really can't wait to meet her. And um, of course, she's going to wear security school. She's got like the five kids. She's got the, she's, she's got all the all the bikers. She, she's the person that organizes. She's the person that's got to mm-hmm. kind of huddle it all together. So it makes sense to me. Um, thank you, Rebecca. And I can't wait to meet you in person. I'll definitely. I have your um, both of your logos. So I'll definitely. Them, um, along with our YouTube channel. How, how does anybody get a hold? Do they just look up on you or do you have well, a phone number? So, Art Cycles does not have an email address okay. by, by design. It's incognito. Yeah. <laughs> by design. You know where to find Check it. With the band. <laughs> but uh, I do have a phone number. You can reach us at 321 313. 0313, and that will get a hold of Melbourne or uh, Blackhawk, but okay. you can reach me through that number. Okay, perfect. perfect. I don't really advertise a lot because you get a lot of tire pickers. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you want you want to attract your, I can see that, like, you, you're you such a niche, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. that you want people to come to you anyways, and that's, yeah. uh, that's pretty amazing. I, I sell most of my reputation and what I build, so mm-hmm. that's the kind of way I want to keep it. I love it. That's cool. Now, eventually, my dream would be to eventually get to where I could have a dealership and sell a brand for, for a dealership. Most likely a British that name brand. That would be cool. Yeah, so I'm, working, I'm currently working on 
I'm getting my dealer's license because BSA, AJS, and Royal Enfield are importing into the U.S. and I would like to have a dealership centric in those three brands. That would be badass. Especially um, Maybe like a chopper dealership. Well, so that's I the whole thing. We, it, don't tell me too much information. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I might want to, but uh, the main thing would be to sell the dealership with the with the OEMs. Yep. And then offer what we can for customization in the back. Very cool. And then art cycles will still be kind of incognito, but we'll bring still bring that design and style into the yep. to those brands. But uh, I think, especially, I like it. I'll get you guys' opinion on it. So I've had mixed opinions. I think with the Sportster being killed out, the 883 Sportster, mm -hmm. I think there's going to need a, a backfill. There's going to need a vacuum for small displacement. Yes. Very cool bucks. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think they've kind of made it on what they call the Sportster X. So that yeah. That, uh, that new model they have. Uh, Revolution X. Yeah. But, it's, but they're not. And they're going to try to turn everything on that. Like said, it's not customized. It's not easily customizable. It's not. It's a. It's a damn good motor. The Revolutionary Max. The Revolution Max was kind of designed through, from what I understand, the VR1000 Moto GP engine. Yeah. yeah. Porsche helped design that. Then it turned into the V rod. Now, kind of a derivative of that is the Revolutionary Max. Revolution Max. What I understand. Mm -hmm. That's, yes, it's, huge. it's a very robust, powerful, quick, very nimble bike. But you like you said, it has its own exhaust. It has its own mm -hmm. fenders. I don't know how well you can customize that. I think if you bought it, you'd have a really good bike to ride around on. It's something you enjoy. But you're probably not going to put some Vance and Hunt drag pipes on it. Mm -hmm. No, it's, uh, and you're not going to see as many modifications exactly what it is. Evo Motors, so look like at the years of the Evo Motor and all the different modifications that you've seen out on the street. Uh, different pipes, different buys, different forks, different frames, different fucking uh, tire orientations. Yeah. Uh, there's engine displacements, cams, there's just so much stuff you can do to the Evos, the shuffle heads, the knuckle heads, the twin cams. They're eliminating, seem to be eliminating that yeah. buildability. Yeah. So I that's, think that's the one thing that always, I like the idea. That's one thing that always steered me towards how the Davidson was. It was so personalizable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're that's building, even a word. No, you're building up. You're, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, buying, you're buying the blank sheet of paper that's a very good. You know, you and then you can change that to fit your personality. Yep. And like you said, I just don't know how well some of the not just hard, but any new box that are coming out. You can yep. change some colors with some stickers, but there's not a lot that you're gonna get in the direction of what we have already. Now I will defend them and saying this. A lot of us are getting too like you said, going to the three rollers, a lot of us are dying out, yeah, getting too old. And they have to attract new customers into the business. That's a business issue. Yeah. Yeah. And with the younger generation, yeah. that's what they're looking at. But what I see from my side, though, is the younger people are gravitating toward the old bikes. Okay. A lot of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, what, for, I'll give you a for instance. When we had that chopper show, we had the Space Town Get Down yep. at uh, Space Coast Harley Davidson. Uh, the kid who won the trophy from Jared Wings is like a world renowned motorcycle builder. He, born, he built a uh, bike that won Born Free California the competition division this past year in June. He came to our show. I'm very grateful he did. But he gave a trophy to that kid. That kid bought this Sportster for eight hundred dollars out of a barn. Took it home. First time he'd ever painted, mm -hmm. done anything of that nature, and built this beautiful chopper. That's cool. Yeah, it was a beautiful bike. I mean, he rode it from Orlando, broke down, somebody picked him up in a truck, finished driving him over. And it, those are the best. This stories. kid was probably it's probably 22 years old. So they are out there. They are. Yes. Keep it up. Keep it up, young ones. So we just have a couple more minutes, but um, Rebecca says you are something to be proud of. Oh, oh. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> 
So we are, you know, we're ready to, we're ready to view. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, definitely check out our new buddy Travis and his uh, and his business um, Art Cycles, which you have to um, go through <laughs> Rebecca's business, which is uh, Blackhawk M1 Security School, and um, give them a call. Check them out. Check check them out on Instagram. I'll be sharing links, and I hope you have a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. For oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate yeah. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. Thanks. And now I'm going to bring them all back. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking.